Hey guys, in this video, we're going to look at how to create this wiggly, shaky text effect in DaVinci Resolve. So without further ado, let's go ahead and have a look. First things first, let's go ahead and bring a Fusion Composition clip into the timeline and then take it directly to the Fusion page. Here, let's bring a text node into the node editor. Then let's also bring a background node into the node editor as well. And then let's connect the text node to the background node. This way, the text node is going to become the foreground in this composition. And then let's also make sure the merge node is connected to media out one. All right, let's go ahead and change the background color first to something that we think looks good. We are also going to add our text in the text node, then change the font of the text to something that is going to work better for this effect. Then lastly, let's change the size of this text, bring it up. And now we're ready to build our effect. So in order to create the wiggly effect, what we need to do is to use a displace node, which you can find under warp. So let's go ahead and bring the displace node in and place it after the text node. Now, what displace node does is to twist the shape of the text based on some sort of mapping. And in this case, we're going to use fast noise as the mapping. So let's go ahead and bring it in and then connect the fast noise node to displace node. Now here, right off the bat, if we start to uh, play with the fast noise parameters like detail and scale, which will change the fast noise, you're gonna see that this is going to have an immediate impact on the shape of the text. And all of this is being transmitted through the displace node. And if we look at our fast noise node itself, you're gonna see that anytime we make changes to parameters like detail, contrast, or scale, anytime we change the noise mapping, this is going to have an impact on the shape of the text. And if we play our effect right now, we see that the shape of the text is being changed, but it doesn't really have any motion. So let's also make sure that we come back to the fast noise node and crank up the seeth rate that's going to right away as you see uh, is going to add motion to our effect and with seeth rate you are not limited by the number that you see there you can change this to something that's much higher which is going to uh, create a much faster movement uh, and then we're just going to continue to play with this until we reach a number that we think is going to work for our effect but one thing we do notice as we play through our effect here is that the effect is really more pronounced towards the edge of the text, but not really so at the center. So the reason why this is the case is because in the displace node, the type is right now set to radial. What that means is that right now is transmitting the noise from the center to the edges. So almost think of it like water ripples. So what we need to do is to change the type from radial to XY. So now it's going to transmit the noise to both the X axis and the Y axis. And if we start to change the X refraction parameter, you're going to see that this will really let the fast noise node impact the X axis of the text here. And if we start to change the Y refraction, this will have a bigger impact on the Y axis of our text here. So if we start to play through our um, effect right now, guys, as you see, this is way much closer to the effect that we are looking for. Uh, technically, you can stop right here if this is uh, this if this works for you. But uh, we're going to continue working on this. So uh, let's keep going. So the next thing we're going to do is to start manipulating the motion of the text. And the way we're going to do that is by using time stretcher node, which you can find under miscellaneous. So let's bring it in and place it behind this place. Now, there are so many different ways you can go about this. Uh, so feel free to play around. But the first way, uh, the first pattern we're going to demonstrate here is uh, we're going to leave uh, a zero at the zero frame. Then we're going to come to the first frame and then keyframe and then still leave it, keep it at zero. Then we're going to move to the second frame. Now here we're going to let it play at the second frame. So let's go ahead and do that. And this will also automatically keyframe. Now we just need to repeat this pattern. So let's go ahead and bring up spline editor, select source time, zooming a little, select all these three keyframes, right click in the menu under set loop. Let's select a relative. 
So now if I zoom out just a little bit, guys, you're going to see that what we just did is to repeat the pattern that we just created. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it is all going to correspond to future frames. So if we start to play through this effect uh, frame by frame, you're going to see that we see the pattern and it's also changing as the clip uh, moves on. So it's great. This is uh, good. So let's close the spline editor, uh, come back to uh, the edit page, uh, let this effect render. So guys, uh, if we look at our effect right now, this is looking really good. Um, it definitely has more rhythm uh, to the motion and uh, this, is, uh, this is looking a lot better. But uh, let's come back to the Fusion page and try out another pattern. So let's click Time Stretcher node and reset the source time parameter by double clicking it. Then we're going to keyframe at the zeroth frame and leave it at zero. Now we're going to come to the second frame, keyframe again, and still leave it at zero. Then we're going to move on to the third frame. Now here we're going to let it play the third frame. So we're going to enter three here, and this will also automatically keyframe. So all we need to do at this point, guys, is just to repeat this pattern, uh, pretty much doing what we did earlier by setting relative loop, making sure that it works. And then uh, let's just uh, come back to uh, the edit page, let this effect render. And uh, guys, um, this is looking really good. Uh, I really like this one, actually. Uh, I think that it definitely adds more rhythm and it's more pronounced as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, guys, uh, this is pretty much it, but there's definitely still a few more things we can do uh, to uh, jazz it up. And one of which is to add a shadow to our text here. So let's come back to the Fusion page, select the text node. We are going to locate the shading tab, then change select element from one to three. So let's also click enabled. Uh, and under softness, we're going to create an expression for the X parameter. This way it's going to move in sync with Y. So we're just going to bring this down because we don't need the shadow to be that soft. Then also under position, we're going to move it so that the shadow is uh, much closer to the text itself. We can also go to the displace node and play with the refraction parameter. But if you're noticing the text is being moved as you change the refraction, you can also change the offset parameter to bring it back a little bit. Okay guys, so if we come back to the edit page, uh, we can see that this effect is looking really good. So this is basically guys, how to create the wiggly text effect. Hope this helps. And as always, I will see you next time.